What's up guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash Tales from Retail. Alright, this story's called 30 Minutes of My Time Wasted. Customer has me help them only to complain and leave cart at store. So I work at a craft store chain with several stores in the area. I'm a cashier, but since we have so many cashiers, I often work on the floor when we aren't as busy. Thanks to Brovid19, we've been having slow incomes of stock piled on top of customers buying more supplies than usual since they are stuck at home having to do crafts. To set today's scene, I was returning items to the shelves when I got stopped by an interesting customer. Customer? Me. Customer's kid one. Customer's kid two. Other store worker. Other store manager. Hello? Do you have this style of yarn in stock? Let me check. Customer shows me her phone and I find the item that's on our app. There's a skew there which I look up and it shows that we are out. I'm sorry, it looks like we're out of that yarn. Do you have any in Ova? stock? No, we do not. Our list of stock details all stock, including overstock. <sighs> when will you be getting more? Now, I need to emphasize that processing is not my field of study in this job, as I am normally a cashier. But I do know that we get new shipments in on Mondays, but yarn has been coming in increasingly sparingly, and we haven't gotten many new shipments in a while due to low supply. Due to delays and low stock thanks to the pandemic, we are not able to tell when any new shipments of yarn will arrive. Customer beginning to look frustrated. Are you sure there isn't any in overstock? I'm positive. We do not even have an overstock location set for this type of yarn as we haven't had overstock for it yet. As we are having this beginning to be repetitive conversation, customers kid one and two arrive out of nowhere. Kid one asks her mother a question. Mom, I need to go to the bathroom. Have kid two take you. But I don't know where the bathroom is. Keep in mind, these two children are young. The oldest, Kid 2, looks to be maybe five years old, while Kid 1 look is about three years older, so. Oh god, I gotta go younger? The bathroom is right around this corner. I point the direction. Customer shooing off her kids. Yeah, yeah, go! She switches back to me. Are there any other stores that may have the yawn? Uh, I can check. Can you please give me a moment? I check the scan gun for other store availability. It looks like nearly every single store in the near nearby vicinity is out as well. Though there is Random Town that's across the city which may have a few- But that's so far! I don't want to drive out that far! At this point, I'm trying to stay as silent as I can. I'm not very confrontational at all and try to let the situation calm down as it could. Customer was beginning to look really infuriated from such a small thing and I wasn't one to feel the flames. I understand your frustrations, but I've checked every single store that could possibly be nearby, and every single one is out of stock except for Random Town. Fine, but I'm gonna call them to make sure they have it. I'll spare most of the 10 minutes. She had me help her set up a call with the other store. She insisted I stay and help her call, even when I had many other things I could do instead. During this time, her children had returned and were clearly desperate for their mother's attention, but customer was physically shooing them off because this call was apparently more important. Eventually, customer got on the phone with the other store after calling three times. Hello? Can you check if you have this specific yarn in stock? I have the SKU number here. Oh, sorry. We aren't able to do that since we're busy right now and don't have anyone available on the floor to check that. But I need you to see if you have this yarn before I drive all the way out there. There isn't anyone available to check for you right now. Can I speak to the manager. I'm gonna put you on hold. Once put on hold, customer addresses me. Craft store has terrible customer service. At this point, I am baffled. Customer has now just addressed me, a customer service member of said craft store, complaining about the customer service of said craft store. In that moment, I had no clue how to respond and simply awkwardly nodded. What kind of response was I supposed to give? I want nothing more than to get out of this, and to be fair, I should have, but I was too afraid to ask to leave. So for five agonizing minutes on hold, I sat with customer and her energetic 
frantic children begging for attention. Eventually, though, the other store's manager picked up the call. Hello? Hi there, can you check if you have this item in stock? He checks. I'm sorry, uh, we do not have any of that yarn in stock. But I'm at a different store and it says that you do have it in stock. Sometimes the system incorrectly puts in the number in stock when mixing up returns. Our apologies. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Customer hangs up and turns back to me. I'll spare the next 15 minutes, but I manage to negotiate and look at another yarn that she may also need for her project and see if she can get that yarn first. It took many more grueling minutes of shifting through every single aisle of yarn we had, but I eventually helped her get a cart full of yarn for her project. As soon as we finished, I was called up to the register to assist with the line. It was extremely hard to hide the visible relief on my face. Though this isn't the end of customer story. Luckily enough, even though we had three cashiers at the register, I was unlucky enough to get customer back at my register when she went to pay. Her kids were still running around, but customer didn't even look in their direction. I was desperate never to see customer's face again, so I quickly rang her up. The trouble began near the end of the transaction. She shows me a coupon. I'm sorry, we no longer accept competitors coupons. Since when? Since last March. There are several signs placed around the registers. I point her towards one. Do you have any other coupons? We have a 20% off coupon on our website. Do you have anything better than that? I explain all possible options we have for discounts at our store. Can I just... Can I... Ah! She grabs her purse and kids. Can you put it on hold? Uh... Sure. Wait. Before I could stop her, customer nearly ran out of the store with her kids in tow. I tried to stop her to let her know that I needed a name and phone number to put it on hold, but she was gone before I knew it. I was now sitting at my register with an entire cart full of yarn that I spent 30 minutes helping this lady find, only for her to run out of the store and demand I put it on hold. Yeah, sure, that customer service totally sucks. I hate people like that. Just kidding, I don't hate anybody. I love everyone, especially mean people. All right, this story is called... Ma'am, that isn't English. So this happened a few weeks ago and I nearly blocked it out of my mind. I work in a home improvement store. It's a typical day where it's not exactly power hour, but it's not like I'm walking around without anything to do. A lady walks up to me and gets my attention. One very important thing to note is that this lady is Asian. She had broken English, but I'm gonna be putting the proper grammar here. Thank you. Those are awkward to read because I, 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 I want to correct them because I don't want to sound offensive. <laughs> but like, I don't, it's a, it's a weird situation. Anyway, hi, how can I help? Yes, I'm looking for this. She holds out her phone to me. Now, this happens quite often as people either want to show a picture or perhaps they don't speak good English. I live in an area that has a lot of Spanish speakers, but also a hefty Asian community, mostly Chinese Mandarin. She's brought up a text message and I cannot read it. I barely remember what it was exactly, which is why I don't know if I wanted to post this story, but I remember 100% that it started with la, and then followed by a word that I believe was something like gabilla. I don't know if that's an actual word. No, this wasn't the actual word used, but it's what my coworkers thought maybe she was trying to look up, trying to look for. More on that later. My Spanish is mediocre at best. I took Spanish in high school, but forming sentences is something I'm not confident. In. Only thing I'm good at is numbers and recognizing certain characters. I try to learn from my coworkers bit by bit, and we have fun with me trying to learn. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I don't speak Spanish. I can find you an employee who does. The lady then looks at me like I just took my shirt off and started screaming while she watches from the other side of a street. Do you speak English? My brain short-circuited in that moment. I couldn't comprehend what I just heard. I'm so thankful I had a mask on because I couldn't hold back my mouth from expressing the what the fudge state. You all know the one. When my brain started back up, which to me felt like a good minute, I say back, uh, I, I do, ma'am. I'm speaking it right now. I just spoke to you in English before. I rarely ever make a snappy comment like that, both because of anxiety and my attempts at professional this was a line I never thought could have been crossed. So do you have this? Read it, it's English. 
She holds out her phone again. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but I do not know what that is. Because that is not English, or at least any word that I've ever heard of. I can try to find another employee who might know what that is. She then shakes her head. Why does no one speak English here? She walks away in a huff. I'm left there, flabbergasted. Eventually, I'm able to maneuver myself to some co-workers who spoke Spanish, and I tell them about what happened. They're also shocked, but when I ask them what those words meant, when I actually had fresh in my mind what the words were, none of them could identify what she wanted. They reaffirm that the use of law was most likely Spanish. I eventually find a coworker who theorizes that the, perhaps she was looking for a rebar, which they tell me capilla is an iron or steel bar. But the lady, or someone else who sent that to her, had written it down wrong. I've dealt with some customers before, but but this was just mind-boggling to me. I can only assume perhaps they mistook the use of the Latin alphabet to automatically assume it was English. I don't hold any kind of negative thoughts to this person. I'm very uneducated in regards of identifying languages myself. I understand the struggle of learning a new language in a new country since I did that myself when I lived in South Korea for a few years. Still, I'm just still scratching my head regardless. I'm gonna give myself a bald spot at this rate. Oh, South Korea, man. I want to try South Korean street food. That stuff looks good. Also, I'm a big fan of bulgogi. I hope I said that right. Bulgogi. Bulgog guy. Nice memory I have is uh, one day, uh, my family was gone from the hotel, and I, and I had my own suite or whatever, and I was really hooked on South Park, and it was either the Stick of Truth or um, the Fractured But Whole. <laughs> uh, but I think I was replaying the Stick of Truth or something, and there's the Mon there's the Chinese restaurant. I think it was actually the, the fractured but whichever one has the Chinese restaurant and you have to fight off the Mongolians. <laughs> um, I know Korean food is not either of those things, but I had ordered it from a Chinese restaurant. I had some Chinese food as, as well as the bulgogi, the Korean barbecue, I'll just say that. And I was eating it while playing that game and it was just really cool. Ooh, with some sweet tea. Oh my God. Mm. All right, this story's called, Why Don't Customers or Their Spouses Actually Listen to What We Say? To give a little background, I work in a small store that specializes in pet supplies. There are three locations that all sell the same items, more or less. One of the things we sell is birdseed. It comes in jugs or bags. The bag is more than double the volume of the jug, but less than $5 more in price. What? We received eight jugs in two bags of birdseed today and my colleague called a customer who had requested we put a couple aside for her. He said we had to leave a voicemail as the customer didn't have her phone. About an hour after my colleague left for the day, I received a call from the customer's husband. The following is the conversation I had with him. We received our shipment today and wanted to confirm that you wanted four jugs? Is that still the case? You'd save money by purchasing the bag instead. Can we get five jugs? I didn't save my jug last time. I've recycled it. Uh, can it be delivered tomorrow along with our food? I can certainly do that, but are you sure that's what you want? If you buy two bags, you're saving money and have roughly the same amount of birdseed. I can send you whatever you'd like. The food is ready to go. I don't have the jug anymore. What's the price difference? I explain all the math and price savings as well as product volume. Also state that I can send two bags tomorrow as that's what I have to sell him. Oh, I'll take five bags then. Uh, sir, I'm sorry. I have two bags physically here in the store that I can sell you if you want them all tomorrow. Okay, I'll take three bags then. That and the dog food. I'm mentally hitting my head on the counter. Uh, sure. I'll send you three bags. Your total for the three bags and food comes to whatever amount. If you're all set, I'll charge the card on file and my driver will see you tomorrow sometime. Oh yes, uh, the credit card. Do you have my wife's card? Uh, yes, it's on file. I'll charge it later today and she will receive an email receipt. Wonderful. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. I called the location closest to the customer's address. Luckily, they had a couple of bags coming, so they were able to supply the missing bag. 
why is it so hard for people to actually listen to what you tell them? Because, silly, people hear what they want to hear, usually. I mean, one could argue, deep down, like on a philosophical level, that that is the case. But then again, the one true philosophical truth, at least according to Rene Descartes, after he was trying his hardest to establish any, you know, universal truths, is that, um, you think, therefore you exist. You're aware of your existence, therefore you exist, and that's the only thing you can actually be sure of. But, if you want to assume that everyone around you is actually there, and we're not all part of some stupid simulation or something, which, Elon Musk is wrong, um, mathematically we are more likely to exist in a non-simulation by a little bit more than half, but, um, anyway, my point is, <laughs> I gotta stop doing that, um, oh, we do hear what we want to hear, oh my god, I can, okay, it would take a few minutes to explain, and I don't want to do that right now, I mean, I do, I really do, but I don't think you guys want to, anyway, uh, Zach, in today's subreddit, <laughs> Uh, that was a funny one. What am I doing? Okay, I guess that's it. All right, this story's called Dude Runs at Me on Icy Roads to Yell at Me About the Placement of a Package. Part of the title. I was at a trailer park in the country delivering someone's overpriced flowers that had been delayed for three days due to the snowstorms in central US. I had to reverse my work truck into the end of the trailer park so that I could have a way out once I finished the delivery. I ended up putting his box of flowers at apparently at his side door that had snow piled up on it because it was the first one I saw. This dude comes out of his trailer house, pissed off that I put it at the side door, and ended up chasing me two houses down on icy roads to yell at me. The pissed off customer ended up telling me that I shouldn't have done it, he worked 10 hours, 3 days late, blah blah blah. He did recognize that he was being a jackass about it, and because of that, I ended up going back to his trailer house, grabbed his box of flowers, handed it to him, and he went back inside. A kicker was, this dude was able to walk through a bigger pile of snow between the two doors and could have grabbed it himself. But you're a cool guy, nice guy, make nice cool guy pants, so you did the right thing, in my eyes at least. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.